This is a story, a true story, about two powerful African predators. One is the black eagle. On a wingspan wider than a man is tall, it cruises the cliff faces and kills with grace and suddenness. It flies as if it owns the air. The other animal is a cat, the caracal lynx. Some of its prey is the same as the eagle's. Sometimes the prey has been known to be an eagle. July in South Africa. Winter with morning snow on the peaks of the mountains. Snow that falls at night and melts during the day. Feeding the streams and rivers that run through the mountains like arteries, supporting life. Some of it spectacular. A female black eagle with her prominent yellow eyebrow. Her name is Emuyeni, Zulu for from the wind. Her mate, Quatele, the cross one. Like most male birds of prey, he's slightly smaller than the female, but his wingspan is still nearly two and a half meters. The pair command an entire mountain gorge. It's a place where, in winter, colorful aloes grow and colorful birds feed on them, cape weavers and white-fronted sunbirds. Insects thrive here at the base of a rich food chain with the black eagles at the top. They're also at the top of the gorge itself, high up a cliff face with a three-week-old chick in a nest which they constantly refurbish with green branches. Quintele and Emuyeni are in the process of rearing a chick. Black eagles mate for life and, unless something goes badly wrong, produce one new black eagle every winter. Emuyeni's main task is to stay with the chick and shelter it from the sun, which can be very hot, even in the winter. Hot enough for agamas to come out and sun themselves and for malachite sunbirds and rock pigeons to cool off in the river. It is in these cooler winter months that black eagles do most of their nest building. Not just the nest, nests. Emuyeni and Quatele have a surplus nest, about 20 meters straight down the cliff face. Even though black eagles only produce one chick a year and only need one nest, they may have up to three nest sites spread across 10 kilometers of mountain range. And they put just as much energy into maintaining it as into the nest where the chick is kept. branches they pick off the mountain sides are heavier than the eagles themselves. In a way though, they seem to enjoy it, as if the whole effort were just an excuse for a virtuoso flying display. The local rock hyraxes or dussies watch closely. They after all are the black eagles main prey. Temporarily neglected, the chick grapples with leftover prey items. Quartelia's display does not go unnoticed. 
The gorge forms the core of the Caracal's 16 square kilometer territory. Averse to the daytime heat, he will rest in the cool shadows, but little will elude his sharp senses. The nest, however, is well out of reach, and if the chick is in danger from anything, it's from overexposure to the sun. But Emoyeni knows precisely how long it's safe to leave the chick without shade, and how much time she can devote to her nest building. It's unclear exactly why black eagles build these extra nests. They could be outposts which enhance the bird's claim on the territory or just be emergency spares. The second nest almost seems like a pastime for them. Quatele is tireless in bringing in sticks and Emuyeni meticulous about their arrangement. It's not just a one-season effort. These nests last and are built and rebuilt for years, sometimes for generations. The hungry chick will have to wait his turn. Fortunately, Quatele isn't so preoccupied with the second nest that he forgets to hunt. And in the afternoon, he flies out. But life does not submit easily in these mountain crags, and fortune plays to Quatele's hand as he strangles the hare. Quatele too must be wary, for the caracal is an opportunist whose reputation haunts the rocky outcrops. The high walls of the gorge bring in the evening. It's late afternoon, and the valley is already in shadows. And it's now, at last, on the still sunny cliffside that the chick is fed. It's now, too, that the caracal begins its daily descent into the valley. It's cooler down here and a male long-tailed widow bird finds time to preen the feathers it uses for its mating display. A marsh owl makes its first catch of the evening. And out on the grassland, the caracal begins its hunt. A caracal is a very special kind of cat. It's not particularly large. It's a species of lynx, after all. But in terms of stealth, agility, and sharpness of senses, it's one of the most efficient cats in the world. Twilight is the caracal's morning. There's a long night ahead, stalking through the grass with ears that scan the landscape like aerials. They pick up a flock of guinea fowl. The rest is down to sharp eyes, silence, and impeccable muscle control.
Like most felines, the caracal will play with his subdued quarry before dealing the final blow. A solitary animal, at home in any terrain, the caracal can catch dussies and rabbits on the mountainside as easily as guinea fowl and hares down here. It's now the end of August, when the rock thrushes start to sing. And the spring rains have brought grass to the valleys. And with the grass comes a change in mood. The dry winter is over, and it's time for sprouting, blossoming, breeding. Stony hollows turn into clear pools. The dussies mass produce young. So do the guinea fowl. All appears to be normal. Except for the black eagles. They're mating. And collecting green sprigs for the alternate nest. Something they would never do unless they plan to lay in it. This is completely unnatural. While most animals are breeding now, black eagles are supposed to breed in the winter. It's as if somehow the obsession with the second nest has overtaken their instincts. It's an early spring and a particularly rich one. But there's no record of black eagles breeding while they've still got a youngster on another nest. And there's no knowing what will happen to that youngster if Emuyeni and Quatele put all their effort into an out-of-season chick. It's an immense gamble. Most black eagle nests lie exposed on the sheer cliff faces with little protection from the scorching summer sun. Nevertheless, Emuyeni and Quatele seem to be going ahead. He prepares the second nest while she sees to the chick on the first. Quartele fetches sticks for the first nest too. And he keeps up the nest maintenance while she removes food scraps before ants find them. But what will happen when there's a new chick on the lower nest? Black eagle chicks normally develop when the weather is coolest. The new one will be growing up as the days are heating up. Our juvenile will be getting ready to fledge and will need a lot of attention. Even after he does fly, he'll need to be fed for about three months. It's now late spring, and the soft early morning sun encourages the eagles to bask on the cliffs. But a sure sign of summer's imminent approach is its vanguard of storms. Thunderstorms. When the storm season hits, the eaglet, now a mottled juvenile, is three months old and about a week away from fledging. The storms stop as suddenly as they started. The eagles are left dripping and the rivers bulging. A painted lady dries its wings. An agama in its full breeding colors eyes a potential meal. Two 
rock pigeons mate. As the juvenile eagle watches, more aware now of life beyond his nest. Malachite sunbirds make the most of the brimming rivers. The whole country seems full somehow. Gladioli on the mountainsides and rare elephant ear flowers take up the spaces between the rocks. Paradise flycatchers have flown down from the north for the breeding season and have built their nest safely under the tree canopy. But the only shade here is the shade Emuyeni makes herself. In a nest fully exposed to the South African summer sun, she has laid her eggs. There are two of them, produced four days apart about 40 days ago, which means that the first will be hatching any day now. Meanwhile, the juvenile is exercising for his maiden flight. So far, the first ever recorded attempt by black eagles to do what's known as double brooding is succeeding. Even though Emuyeni, panting heavily, seems to be suffering severely in the sun, there's hardship for Quatele too. These days, the juvenile is hungrier than ever and only his father is free to hunt for him. Quatele brings the rabbit to a spot near the lower nest. Emuyeni leaves her eggs for a short while, for it is she who must deliver the food to the juvenile. The rabbit's heavy, half the weight of Emuyeni herself, and the nest is just a shelf on a sheer cliff. There's no room for error. The juvenile seizes the rabbit. Quatele seems to celebrate a rare moment of leisure with an aerial display. Even though he'll be fledging soon, the juvenile still isn't very good at feeding himself. This is one reason why he'll still need his parents when he leaves the nest. As Quatele watches, and the juvenile acts his age, Emuyeni quickly feeds herself. She has little time as she must return to protect her eggs from the sun. Late afternoon shadows begin to bring relief to the valley. Red-winged starlings bathe in the river. And the juvenile, now fed and frisky, pretends a stick is a dussy or a rock rabbit. And catches a glimpse of the caracal, beginning its evening hunt. The juvenile finishes off the stick by strangling it with his talons. And the caracal makes its daily descent to the grasslands. The cat's all ears again. And eyes. and coiled muscles.
but even a caracal. Fails, sometimes. The coming darkness is the caracal's ally, and there are many hours left to try to secure a meal. Black eagles aren't the only big, elegant birds soaring among these cliffs. Much more common are the Cape Griffin vultures, which start the day by soaking up the morning sun. They nest in colonies, and their chicks grow up in noisy playgroups. And even when they're adults, they still hang around together, going every day to bask in places where vultures have basked for millions of years. For the eagles at the gorge, something's happening that's never been known to happen before. A black eagle chick is starting to hatch, while its three-month-old sibling watches from the nest above. The shell is finally broken. The chick is wet, and before it can eat anything, it'll have to dry out and fluff up. But there it is. A black eagle chick hatched in the heat of summer before its older sibling, a little higher up the same cliff, hasn't even left the nest. The juvenile is, of course, oblivious to the event, his attention drawn to swifts darting to and from their nests. For Quartele, the sight of the chick triggers a change in his behavior. In an unprecedented move, he attacks his own offspring. Emuyeni puts a stop to his aggression, but he's still agitated. Not only must she protect her chick, but also her chick's food. There's always a chance Quartele might take it. He strikes again. with a newly hatched chick alone in the blistering sun, Quartele is forced back to the lower nest. Her juvenile safe from further attack, Emuyeni takes the prey to the lower nest leaving the bewildered juvenile to regain his composure. The chick gets its first meal. His father's drastic change of attitude has had at least one useful effect on the juvenile, Fledging has become a matter of priority. And he suddenly makes his first awkward flight. And his first clumsy landing. He's now at the equivalent of his toddling stage, when he's learning what his wings can do. This should last a few months, with his parents looking after him, feeding him, and showing him how to hunt. But instead, for three days they leave him on his own, learning the tricks of the wind. While Emuyeni and Quatele concentrate on the newcomer in the lower nest, and on the other egg, which is now hold, and on the verge of hatching. So, on the third day, with a second chick about to hatch, the juvenile is soaring over the gorge. When again, Quartele turns on his offspring. This is a father that should be teaching his fledgling how to hunt, how to fly, how to eat. Instead, 
Quatene seems intent on driving him away. The possibility of an injured bird seems to interest the caracal, who watches the struggle intently. For the juvenile, it's the aerial equivalent of sink or swim. In trying to dodge Quatele, he displays flying skills far beyond his age. Then, Emuyeni leaves the chick and the unhatched egg, and this time, instead of defending the juvenile, mimics her mate's behavior. The chick is left to swelter in the sun. And not so many months ago, this was a chick. Emuyeni and Quatele hunted for him, fed him, shaded him, kept his nest fresh and brought him up to fledging. He's a fine young eagle. And now they're doing this. Unless it's just muddled instincts, it would be hard to say exactly why. A juvenile that hasn't been taught to hunt would seem a lot less threatening to the chick than, for instance, the hot sunshine. The juvenile is finally forced to land. Hello. While the caracal watches. The one thing the young bird has yet to appreciate are the specifics of the world's dangers. As soon as the juvenile launches again, Quatele is after him, although there's at least an uncharacteristic attempt to strike back. And Emuyeni returns at last to make some shade. Finally, the juvenile takes the hint and leaves the gorge, the only world he knows. After traveling about two kilometers, he lands in a strange place. He's on his own now, an outcast. Unless his parents feed him, he won't eat. Unless they protect him, he will be vulnerable to predators. Evening sets in. The male widow bird displays his tail as the caracal begins the night's hunt. The widow bird sounds the alarm. The guinea fowl react without knowing what or where the danger is. The night passes. And the griffin vultures bring in the dawn. And at the gorge, what the dawn has brought is another new black eagle chick. The second egg cracked during the night and Emuyeni now gives the new chick its first meal. The hatching of the second chick coincides with the breeding of other birds in the gorge. A rock pigeon, for example, dispensing her crop milk. The new chick means a lot more work for Quatele and more time spent searching the cliffs and crevices for food to feed his expanded family.
The juvenile uncharacteristically sleeps on the ground, unaware of the dangers lurking in the cliffs. He doesn't know better. Quatele spots something. And snags it, a guinea fowl. And then he takes it, not to the nest, but two kilometers away. To the juvenile. And that explains what he and Emu Yeni were trying to do. They just wanted the juvenile out of the gorge, away from the chicks. Quatele will still feed him and help raise him after all. Back at the nest, there's prosperity too. Could these eagles actually break all the rules and produce three offspring in one year? It's highly unlikely. Black eagles almost always lay two eggs and have two hatchlings. And the larger one, the firstborn, almost always kills its sibling. It's called the Cain and Abel struggle. And in this nest, with Emuyeni seemingly unperturbed, the elder chick, Cain, is well on its way to doing what its genes command it to do. The juvenile's genes, meanwhile, are commanding him to practice grabbing to anticipate hunting. Emuyeni takes the brunt of the heat on a nest she can't leave. At a time of year when she shouldn't by rights be stuck there. But down at the stream, Quartele at least can get a little relief. It's too shallow for a bird this size to immerse himself in, but he can wade and sit in the water. All Emuyeni can do in the heat is tidy the nest, watch over the chicks and make sure they're shaded. She might be tempted to join her mate and probably would in a normal year. But now she can only wait for Quatele to feel refreshed enough to relieve her at the nest. But the South African summer often brings its own relief. In the form of winds blowing down over the hills. Winds Quatele can ride. Eagles do seem to enjoy wind and the kind of acrobatics it allows. That is, they seem to enjoy it up to a point. Until it escalates and turns into a full-blown storm. Quatele can only sit it out. Which means no hunting at a time when Emuyeni, the chicks and the juvenile are all depending on him. So he has no choice. Even in this wind and blinding mist, he has to hunt. But on the ground, the caracal appears to thrive in the storm's confusion. It quickly flushes out a nervous rock rabbit and just as quickly loses it. The hills echo the coming storm, but over large parts of the landscape, there's no rain. The sky might as well be tossing down lighted matches because soon, Large parts of the mountain landscape are on fire.
mourning and devastation. Quartele caught nothing yesterday, and today there's just bleakness. The family has not eaten in almost two days, and the fires are still burning. At the nest, there's a hungry mother and two hungry chicks, one faring far worse than the other. The fire is getting closer, but the fire and even the sun are less threatening now than starvation. Emuyeni can't wait any longer. Red-winged starlings mob her as she starts off. She soon sees why Quatele hasn't brought any food. In the nest, the dominant chick, Cain, continues its ruthless quest to be the sole survivor. Quartele's hunt has carried him into unknown territory, and he is mobbed by a resident sparrowhawk. Finally, an unburned stretch and a rabbit. The attempt is foiled. The sun's getting hotter, but the eldest chick's drive to kill its sibling is so strong that even this heat doesn't stop him. Emuyeni searches the barren landscape. Why, it might be asked, do black eagles always lay two eggs when one of the resulting chicks is destined to kill the other? Insurance, maybe? If something goes wrong with one egg, there would be a spare. But added insurance can only go so far. It can't change the fact that this is the wrong season to have offspring. The sun is too hot. And now, even Cain starts to falter. The younger chick will not live, but this chick's survival is also far from assured. It needs food, and most of all, it needs shade. Emuyeni too is desperate. There's no food in the usual places, no life. It's a last resort, but there is the griffin vulture colony, with its stock of chicks. But the age-old conflict between black eagles and cape griffins has sharpened the griffin senses. They are seldom caught unawares. Emuyeni must find food and get back. Immediately. But the grass fires have spread way beyond the home gorge. And even the caracal has been pushed out of its own territory. And is now moving towards the gorge where the juvenile eagle is sitting. At the sight of this unusual intruder into his gorge, the juvenile's hunger is instinctively joined by fear. 
Unsuccessful in their hunt, Quartel and Emuyeni begin their long flight back to the two young chicks. Kane is desperate and searches the horizon for any sign of his parents. His younger sibling brother has almost succumbed to the heat. But fortune is to be on the side of the juvenile, because as Emuyeni and Quartele fly over his gorge, they spot the caracal and see a critical situation unfolding. The juvenile senses warn him. Emuyeni swoops at the cat and it dodges into a crag. Quantele judges his moment carefully. But this is a conflict born over timeless generations, and the Caracal knows the trees will shield him from the raking talons. Emuyeni and Quartele manage to chase it to the other side of the gorge, but no further. It stands its ground. The cat would be less of a threat to the juvenile had he not been forced out of his home gorge, where there would always be at least one parent looking out for him. But now, all the caracal has to do is wait and watch. Because the juvenile's parents will have to leave at some point and go back to the nest. By the time Quartel and Emuyeni reach their nest, the late afternoon shadows have crept up the cliff to provide some relief from the relentless sun. They return to a terrible scene. The younger chick is dead. Quartel lashes out at his mate. But it is Emuyeni who rules the nest and it is she who must deal with the day's misfortunes. As she begins to pick up the dead chick, Quartele leaves. He looks down on a most unusual scene, never before captured on film. The storm is over and the fires have burnt themselves out. Once again, a quiet summer night. The caracal begins its prowl. The moonlight helps. Although even on the darkest night, a caracal can find prey. The faint chirping means the juvenile hasn't moved. The caracal follows its ears. few clouds start to drift across the moon. In the near total darkness, the caracal makes his kill. Morning. 
And back at the Eagle's Gorge, Kane has survived the night, but he needs food desperately. Emuyeni and Quatele have been hunting together since early dawn. They finally spot something that has survived the fires and come into the open. In a true display of Black Eagle cooperative hunting, Emuyeni flushes the quarry out, and Quatele strikes behind her. Throwing caution to the wind, he recklessly tumbles down the cliff, gripping his prey. A rock rabbit. Their only hope today was teamwork. Anything they saw had to be caught, and their chances increase when they hunt together. But once again, they have both been gone from the nest for a long time. But it's been a gamble to save the original gamble, the decision to breed out of season. The risk was leaving their surviving chick unattended in the summer sun. They may have pushed their luck too far. When they finally get back to the gorge, and to the cliff where they ambitiously built their two working nests. They find the second chick, dead. It's Quatele who's first to the nest and the body. He takes in the total failure of their attempt at summer breeding. As hungry as he is, Quatele abandons the rabbit. He leaves it and the dead chick to Emuyeni. Her reaction in the end is a little more practical. She has a fresh rabbit. And she also has another hungry offspring. The juvenile, the one she started with, and one that's also suffered greatly from the experiment in double brooding. Attacked by his parents and ultimately exiled to another gorge, defenseless, not knowing how to feed himself and never knowing when or if another meal would be flown in. Emuyeni lands at the place where she last saw the juvenile. But the familiar calling of the juvenile does not greet her. This year, the black eagles gambled with their breeding and ended up losing everything. Three chicks hatched, Three died. They can rest now and spend what's left of the summer hunting for themselves and getting the nest ready for the following winter. In this case, double brooding had proved disastrous. The next winter, the crew that made this film went back to the mountains. To the Cape Weavers and the Aloes. And of course, to the Black Eagles. Emuyeni was still there. Quatele was still performing his acrobatics.
The caracal was there too, resting in the grass and watching and watching. And when the crew followed Emuyeni back to her nest, the upper one, the one last year's juvenile had been raised in, there were chicks there, three of them. Last year, they were the first black eagles ever known to have tried double brooding. This year, they were the first ever known to have three chicks in one clutch. Emuyeni and Quartele are very, very ambitious birds.